All right, we're just about to get underway here at Lake Braddock. Lake Braddock Bruins varsity team will be taking on the South County Stallions today on a wet night here in Burke. Get into a little bit more of that in a minute. Let's introduce, first of all, the Stallions starting line. Leading off is the center fielder, Tyra Orff. Batting second is the right fielder, David Perrin. K and B and the catcher will hit third. Bryce White, side of the left fielder, hits fourth. Tristan Deemer, the first baseman, will hit fifth. Hitting sixth is the shortstop, Trevian Campbell. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, Michael DeVore. Uka Yaka, the third baseman, hits eighth. And then batting ninth is the second baseman, Wyatt Osborne. And on the mound for the Bruins is the ace himself, Jake Drum. This is his fifth start of his senior campaign here in 2024, wearing number 24, of course, like always. Overall, of course, he's been the best ace anyone could ask for, pitching very, very well on all four of his previous starts and looks to keep the Bruins' momentum up today against the South County Baseball team that has just gotten a lot better this season and has shown to be more of a challenge for the teams that they have faced, as, of course, the last couple of years they've been more so near the bottom of the barrel of the Patriot District. And, of course, the South County team beat Lake Braddock on opening day at South County 3-2. to two. As they really showed that it can beat a Titan like Braddock, so they look to Keep that up and also be another really challenging team in Alexandria City just a few days back. Leadoff hitter, Orf is ready. Drum is ready. Let's do it. And first pitch, Orf is going to fly it. On the infield and caught. First pitch and a first out made by Matt Shape. One away. Bruins overall in the season come in on 6-5, and five, winning 5-0 five against Fairfax and shutting him out on Monday. And then South County looking to bounce back after a 6-1 loss versus the Woodson Cavaliers on Monday in their competition. Here's Perrin, and Drum fires a fastball in there for strike one. Oh one. Never aggressive swing by the Stallions in the right field. Tailing towards the line is Dean Johnson, and he makes a play. Two out, crossing the foul territory. So two men retired on the first three pitches at drum throws. Both won a pop out and then a fly out, or more so a foul out in right field. And that's a good way for Bruins to start. So nobody on two out for Caden B and be very talented. South County catcher, first pitch. He's going to screw this one foul the opposite way, 0-1. Of course, remember, B and walked off the Bruins on opening day back at South County on March 12th. I gave South County over first one of the year. Of course, B and one of the, also the four captains on the Stallions. Only one who's a sophomore. Other three are senior players. Just shows you how much talent that, B and has 0-1, and he's going to chop this one, and it's a fair ball if you home plate umpire calls. So it rolls in a foul ground down the left field line. B and hustling for two, and he's there with a two-out double. He's such a big table setter for this South County team. Such a young talent. One of the best young catchers in the area. A very young budding star for the Stallions, too. And really talk, talk about what a big leader he has become with his explosive Power exit below in the South County lineup and overall in a dugout, too. Not only that, he's also a great pitcher, but there he gets a two out double. And that'll set up for the cleanup hitting left fielder in Bryce Whiteside, who is one of the three captains on the Stallions who are seniors. <laughs> As Blake Say comes on to courtesy run at second with two out. So draw, So that's a good double off Bruins ace for B in. First pitch to white side here. He's going to score that one off a backstop 0-1. Well, 
White side playing left field for the Stallions today. And hitting cleanup. Here's the 0 1. That's a strike. And quickly 0 and 2. Drum able to get right back in it. He does this a lot. He'll work really well out of jams when he's in trouble. Showing it so much in the past. Looking to show it here again. All that tenacity boiling up in him. Takes a couple looks towards second. Now, pickoff attempt. B in, dives back, and he's safe. Actually goes Blake C as a pronunciation. Sorry if I got that wrong. Still 0-2 here on white side. We're in scoring position for South County and two out. Hall sets off at the outside corner. 0-2 from Drum. Slider and that catches the outside. And that's a 1-2 count now. Slider in the right center field. George on the run, and he can't get it. Overran the ball, and it's going to go all the way to the right field fence. Scoring is C, and that's an RBI double for Whiteside. And they rally off drum here. Two out, it's one nothing Stallions here in the first. So one nothing Stallions, just like that. 0-1 count now on Tristan Deemer, Stallions senior first baseman. So that's quite the pitcher to get a run off of in Jake Drum. You won commit, reigning regional pitcher of the year. She was co-region pitcher of the year with Kenny Michaels of Hayfield last year. It's now graduated 0-1. Strike two in there. So Deemer quickly behind. And Deemer is a power for of two out. He's already homered earlier this year. White side off second. 0-2 from Jake Drum. Tip and a miss. And oh, it's still a foul ball. He held on to it. So still 0-2. Hall couldn't really corral it long enough, and then it fell out of his glove. Drum nearly had him there on a swing and a miss. Try again. Now sets from Belton. Now comes down for another 0-2. There, strike free this time. Deemer down looking to any inning. Stallion strand a runner at second. But they do take the lead on the RBI double by Bryce Whiteside. We'll go bottom of first. Stallions lead 1-0 as the Bruins are coming to bat.
Quickly, we want to take a look at Bruins starting the lineup here. Leading off is a shortstop, Jamie Liskowski. Hitting second is the second baseman, Matthew Shabe. Pod Hall, the catcher, hits third. Jake Drum, the Bruins pitcher, hits fourth. Mac Edwithson, a DH, hits fifth. Dom Quadros at first, hits sixth, and plays first. Matt Mayer is back in the lineup after Braden Gibson has started the last few consecutively. Is in there at third base, Ryan Harding, the freshman left fielder, hits eighth. And batting ninth is the center fielder, Evan George, with the right fielder being out of the lineup in Dean Johnson. And on a mound is the South County ace, Reed Osborne, the senior righty. And last time out, he's really had in that game on opening day. Pitched most of the game, six innings, and only gave up a couple runs. And it was to this guy, a two-run shot by Laskowski. Curve ball outside, and it's 1-0 here on Jamie. And Osborne overall has had really, really good success against the Bruins, one of the better pitchers overall that's done really well against a lot of great Wake Braddock offenses over the last year in their lineups. Looking to continue that today. 2-0 as Jamie's quickly ahead. Of course, Wiskowski, what a game he had on Monday versus Fairfax. Pitch a shutout on the mound and then had a – Lead-off home run versus Ryan Hartle, the Fairfax starter. 2-1 and one as Osborne gets his first strike of the game in there. And so, of course, Jamie looking to replicate that same success. He had in that lead-off at bat against Fairfax and Osborne earlier this year, hitting the home run. 2-1, slows down his leg kick, and this one is sliced off the screen and down to Matt Shabu who catches it. 2-2. Two and two. Jamie overall really, really good out of the leadoff spot. He just crushes balls with blistering velocity. 2-2 Two -two from Osborne. Faster windup. And he spoils another one there. Right down to Shea again, almost off the same location of his screen. And it's still 2-2. Two and two. So Lake Braddock this game offensively is going to really try to figure a lot more out. And that game was only the two-run home run by Wiskowski. That was the Bruins scoring on opening day. Russell lineup really didn't do a whole lot to help out Bruins offense as they lost three to two, two, two. That's a curveball drilled, but foul and hard down a right field line. And Jamie will get another look at Osborne. Two two from Osborne. Spring to short. Campbell across. Not in time. Wiskowski beats it out with his speed. He'll do that. And that's a base hit for a Bruins to lead off the game. So surely in the last game on the leadoff home run, it's not that, but still an infield single there, putting pressure on the Stallions defense. And Matt Shape comes up. So Shabe is in here now with one on. Nobody out for Bruins. Throw back to first by Osborne. Keeps Jamie close. Shabe returning to second base starting this game where he's the position where he started the most this season. Last game he made his first start at short as Jamie Wiskowski, the normal Bruins shortstop, was on the mound and pitching. Shave squares to bunt. It's a high one, but no one's going to get it. It's towards the Bruins dugout. 0-1-1. Jamie is, or Shave rather, has gotten a lot of time up the middle this year. Has also played a little bit of right field too. So playing those three positions, he's shown quite a bit of versatility and playing it to great authority. Also being a good contact bat at the top of the Bruins order. Only a sophomore. Throw back again a first. And Jamie, of course, a fret to go. He stays put. As Osborne keeps him put again. Bruins dug out. Like always, very, very loud in the early going. 0-1. Swider ripped outside. 
one one as Bean blocks it. Very moist day here at Lake Braddock. We had some rain earlier. It was a question whether or not this game was going to be postponed or not. But what the Bruins essentially want to do, they want to have try every attempt to play this game in any way they can. As of course they've already had a ton of rainouts and they've had to swap locations, a lot of games of where they've been playing. It actually happened this past week when they had to play up in D.C. at St. Albans. That game was originally scheduled to be here at Lake Bragg because of bad field conditions. It was played up there. 1-1 one, one here from Osborne, and that's scolded to right field. That ball is going to be foul. Hit it hard down the other way, but had nothing to show for it as it ran much to the right side and foul, 1-2. and two. And so, not only taking consideration all the delays or and postponements that the Bruins have had to make to a lot of your games this year and the location changes, throw back to first again. And this ball is out of a glove of Deemer, but protecting him there is the second baseman, Campbell. It's actually Campbell playing second and Wyatt Osborne, the younger brother of Reed, playing short. A little bit of a lineup uh, miss, uh, confusion with the defensive alignment. All the schedule flip pops for rain this year. Blake Bragg does not want to really go into that again. Here's a no time next week where Bruins have three games total. Can't make it up tomorrow. Very way at West Potomac. Never throw back. Really keeping a close eye on Jamie there. And he knows it. So you can't really make it up next week as they want to avoid playing four out of five days in a school week. And they could try later in the season, but it seems not that's what they wanted to do. Never pop up, and Shabe is putting up a good at bat here in a good battle against the South County Ace. We're going to try getting through it today. Of course, we'll see how all these wet conditions might affect the players in the outfield and how they field the ball. Also, the pitchers as well for both teams, how they'll grip and locate their pitches. Never throw back. Wiskowski is safe. And Osborne will just not let go of the fact that Wiskowski is there at first. He wants to make sure that he does not get an inch way off the bag and take off the second. Umpire saying that it hit his knot as it's rolled a foul ball. Looked like it almost hit his hands, but Shave is still in us at bat here. Still one and two. Runner on first for the Bruins. Nobody out. Stallions lead one nothing. Here in the bottom of first. Muskowski creeps off the bag again. Osborne, a long stand and now throws. Fastball upstairs, and it's two and two. Throw back. Got another throw to keep Wiskowski put at first. Just as tough of a team that Lake Braddock can be a lot. South County knows this is a big game at stake. They want to really get, into, get a good hold of the standings and get good momentum on. There's a curveball, but it's just up above the letters. Three and two here on shape. So South County fighting really hard right to start it off. Payoff, Waskowski goes, and will check swing push. We'll put the ball foul and out of play, and Waskowski will do it, or rather Shave will do it again. Osborne, 5'10", weighs 155 pounds.
Payoff pitch again, and Shape in a right center field. This ball is down in the gap. And Wiskowski is off to races, rounding third, coming home. Tie game to third, Shape. He is safe. Feet first slide, RBI triple. Bruins tie it at one. What a way for a Bruins to battle back after dropping down one nothing, And Matt Shabe, the sophomore, ties it with an RBI triple in the right center. And with Wiskowski speed, that's why Osborne is keeping such a close eye on him at first because he can blaze around the bases like that. So Patrick Hall comes up, and the Stallions will bring the infield in, trying to cut off Shabe at home if they get a chance to. Pitch here to Hall from the windup. Osborne deals a curveball for a strike, 0 and 1. A one of the Bruins catcher coming up. Drilled out to left field. White side backpedaling makes the catch. Here comes Shave to the plate. Throw skips past Osborne. And the Bruins take the lead, a sack fly by Pod Hall, and it's 2-1 here in the first. So not just Wiskowski. This time for Bruins doing stuff against Shabe, or the Stallions, and Reed Osborne. But so it was Shabe and Hall so far as the Bruins pitcher Jake Drum comes up. Of course, we know how good of a hitter Jake Drum can be at times. Big extra base. Power of home run potential ahead of it. 1-0 and as he takes inside. So Drum looking to help his Bruins out at the plate today and also on the mound. Going two-way yet again this season. 1-0. Looked like a little bit of a two-seamer in there. It's had a little bit of back-to-forth action, and it's one and one. One-one here from Osborne. Another two-seamer upstairs, and it's two and one. This drum gets ahead. Two one, and down in the basement, three and one as that curveball misses. So Osborne falling behind a little bit. Three one, we're going to bounce back after giving up the lead to the Bruins. Off the diving try of his brother, White Osborne, and that's a base hit. Try to get it full extension on the ground up the middle. But does not smother the ball in his glove as Drum reaches at first. And the courtesy runner is Aiden Wolf at first base to come in and run for Drum. And that'll bring up the big lefty bat for Bruins in McLean Edwithson, senior DH. And you talk about. The lefties lavering runs up for Bruins on Monday against Fairfax. That's what they did. Three of her five came against left-handed bats. A home run by Jamie. And then this guy right now at the plate in Edwithson, who had the home run and an RBI double. That home run was his first at the varsity level. Umpire needed new baseball as Edwithson steps in now. So Edwithson... Also, who's been a big run producer for a Bruins this season. Try to lengthen their lead right here. Bruins have started off hot. Two runs on three hits already. Wolf leads off first. Outside on a corner for a strike. 0-1.
Reed Osborne is going to take his time here. 0-1. Yanked up and away, and it's 1-1. One one. On the fastball. Just in our cameras right now. Sorry about that, guys. Count is two and one on Edwison as he jumps ahead. Trying to give you guys a better view. The lighting has been a bit of a problem. In our production up here in the booth, 2 1. Locked up the hands of Edwison as he takes fastball inside, 2 and 2. Wolf leads off first. 2-2 two, two on away. Curve ball. Fended off. Third baseman. Luca Yaka makes the play. Two down. So the first baseman, Dom Quadros. Comes in to hit for Bruins, the first baseman. Quadros had an RBI single against Fairfax on Monday, so Bruins going for a hot hand again. Throw back to first, keeps Wolf there. Just with Wiskowski, but Osborne doing half a couple other Bruins base runners this inning, such as Wolf. First pitch here to Quadros. I'm going to pitch him backwards to start it off as it's a strike on a curve, 0-1. Of course, Dom Quadros, the younger brother of the former Wake Braddock star and 2019 state champion Ryan Quadros. Of course, you guys might remember big outfielder, great pitcher for a Bruins, helping to win their second straight title. Way away on at one, 1-1 one one here on Quadros. So Dom looking to follow in his big brother's footsteps as he's now currently playing at Marymount, the D3 school up in Arlington. A lot of Wake Braddock Bruins who used to play here are now there now. Seems like it's a big option for college players that are rising to go. Comes to Braddock Baseball 1 and 2. Here on Dominic. Just by Dom for short. And a one and two from Osborne. Two seamer up, two and two. Two, two. Swing and a miss. Way in front of out in front of that curveball. And Dom Quadro strikes out to the end, meaning Bruin Strand Wolf at first, but they take the lead. Two to one. RBI triple by Matt Shabe and a sack fly by Pod Hall gives the Bruins those two. As they lead, we go to the second. Again, it's 2 1 Bruins after one.
Right, top, to, all right, top of the second here. Trevian Campbell leading off for the Stallions. Takes inside 1-0 from Jake Drum, who's in the seconding of work for the Bruins. one -oh. Fastball in there for a strike. One and one. Bruins currently lead 2-1. to one. Drum looking for a bounce back inning after he allowed a run the first. That allowed the Stallions to get the lead. Bruins bounce back in the bottom first score two and jump out on top one and two on Campbell now playing second base for the Stallions tonight. Nice bat he has there with the lime green handle. One, two, swung on and missed. Swider gets him. Okay for Drum to begin the second and there's one away. A DH, Michael DeVore, will come up for South County now. A quick strikeout for Drum to begin his inning. Pitch here. Wind foul the opposite way, and it's 0-1 as it's foul. The 0-1 from Drum, swing and a miss. That's some big drop down on it, that curveball, and it's 0-2 here on DeVore. DeVore, it's unknown to you, related to a former South County player, David DeVore, who was a senior and played on the Stallions last year. Now graduated, fouled back there by David, and it's still 0-2 on him. And here is Michael DeVore with the same last name. He's a sophomore. Infielder and David DeVore was an outfielder. 0 2. Way too much break on that one. 1 and 2. And a 1 2 from Drum. Fastball fouled, one and two still. Now Drum steps off a bit. One, two again. Another fastball fouled off as DeVore's Making drum labor a little bit in this at bat. Still one and two. This is also DeVore's first year on the Stallions varsity team. One, two. Slider misses. Good eye there. Two and two. Sprever. Now, David DeVore actually had a very short and simple swing, allowed him to really work a lot of at bats and stay for his own. In the right center field and out from a second base position, Shabe has a second out on the grab. As DeVore is retired. So that short, simple swing. DeVore put up a bit of a battle against Drum, but now doesn't come up with anything as he... Pops out into short right field. Foul ball there by the third baseman, Luca Iasi. Nobody on two out here for the Stallions. A one. Slider misses one and one. Iasi is one of the many young sophomores at the Stallions are deploying out in their lineup today. Lineup a lot younger compared to last year, which was consistent of many seniors. As he's ahead here, two and one. So the Stallions are really trying to build a big younger core. They got a few of those pieces, such as Caden Bean, great catcher, three and one. Of course, one of the four captains on the Stallions this year, and he's the only 
captain that's not a senior. He's a sophomore, just like Yassi, the guy up right now for South County. Free one. Fastball swung on a miss. Some high octane VOO, and it's free and two. The South County is still giving a, trying to give their younger guys a lot more time to develop. They can try to go on a run and win a lot more games compared to the last couple of years and strike free. Got him on a payoff fastball, and Drum strikes out two in the inning. C retires V Stallions. One, two, three. Go to bottom of second. Bruins lead 2-1 as Drum bounces back from the first inning where he gave up a run. First pitch from Osborne here as we start bottom second. Hits the third baseman, Matthew Meyer. And he's on first to lead off the inning. So now for wave out Osborne wanting to start it. And just like that, the freshman, Ryan Harding, will step into the box. Right away here, start the bottom of the second. Bruins lead 2-1. to one. Jake Drum pitched the Bruins pitcher. Pitched a 1-2-3 second inning after he gave up a run. That gave the Stallions a lead in the top of the first. Bruins now lead 2-1 now. Harding, the freshman, pulls back the bunt. The upstairs fastball, 1-0. So bottom third, the Bruins. Start the inning, due up. Was Meyer. Now Harding is up. And then on deck, now that Meyer is on base, is Evan George. And in the hole, it's Jamie Laskowski, as Harding is going to call time here. Harding really... The first freshman to crack the Bruins starting lineup since Jamie Laskowski and Pat Hall, two current Bruins, did since 2021. There he shows you what the Bruins think of him, the talents he's got. Throw down a second. Meyer is out. Laser throw from B, and it was a little high. But Stallions infielder up the middle came down to slap the tag right on him and caught stealing is Meyer. There's one away. Bean has quite the arm. And Telltale signs a pitcher as he can throw near 90 miles an hour just as a sophomore. That kid is something special. 3 0 here on Harding. Harding also already has started a few games for Bruins this year. All have come in left field. First got his bite of action in the spring break tournament. And he walks here with one out. Works some good at bats and gets on base again. So the Bruins, I think, like, really like about him. Evan George, nimble center fielder, hitting ninth for a Bruins, comes in. Pitch here. Snap throw. B and did not get him. As Harding gets back to the bag, 1-0. Uh, as Harding took a big lead off first. George, another big speed threat for Bruins in the lineup. He's got a ton of it in his tank. 
That one chopped foul down a left field line and foul one and one. It's like the Stallions, Bruins, who are actually deploying a few younger players in their lineup as well. A couple of sophomores and a freshman, just like the Stallions are, but a lot more sophomores in their lineup compared to the Bruins. Two and one as George draws ahead, but the comparison to a lot of the cur uh, more recent Bruins teams the last few years, they've had so many seniors in their starting lineup. This year it's a bit different as that number is decreased a bit in the number of seniors that they start. Big chance to see what the younger guns can do. Two and two now. As George fouls that one off. George has really shown it as well. Number nine spot. Getting a lot of contact, working a lot of fast, getting some good line drives. Two and two from Osborne. That's strike free. Bottom third. Catches George on a breaking ball two away as Osborne gets the K. And the Bruins lineup flips over as Jamie Laskowski steps in. Laskowski in his first at bat had an infield single. Was hit right to the shortstop, Wyatt Osborne. And Osborne, it looked like a routine play. Osborne tried to throw Laskowski out at first, but Laskowski with so much speed was able to beat it out and look like a very easy play. As he's going to serve this one in the left. He's two for two. A base hit in the left field. Harding moves up to second. First and second, two out for Bruins as Matthew Shabe comes up. Matt Shabe got for Bruins. Scoring started in bottom of first. An RBI triple to right center field. Already has one RBI in the day. Looking for more. Coming up right here. Spian goes and has a little talk with Osborne on the mound. So Osborne working himself into a two-out jam here. Pitch on away from Osborne. Fastball, strike one. Everyone would really love to get a big lead off this South County ace pitcher. It's really held the Bruins to only a minute amount of runs in a few starts in the past. 0-1. Oh, Put in play. 5-6 hole. Wide Osborne. No play. And everybody is safe. The bases are loaded. With two out. That's going to go as the Bruins' fifth hit. Infield hit. And that brings up the big man in the catcher, Pat Hall. Hall, of course, always known to be a clutch hitter. There's going to be a talk here on the mound with Osborne. Try to settle him down. Glad you guys could join us on this Thursday night. I'm Adam Hazera, your commentator. And I am more than thrilled to be serving you guys as all of you come on to tune in and spend your Thursday evening with us. Watching from home. So the Mount Conference has concluded. Now Pod Hall steps in. Of course, talk about him being clutch. He already has an RBI in his day with a sack fly. The so line out to left field. And it scored Matt Shave from third in the first. That gave the Bruins a two to one lead. Osborne from the 
wind up here. Delivers a curve in there for a strike, 0 and 1. Here's the 0 1. Split foul on a right side, 0 and 2. As Reed Osborne quickly gets ahead. One strike away from working out of a bases loaded two out. Slippery situation. Paul looking about a low two, way off. The breaking piece, one and two. Have a one two on the way. Push foul and out of play. Still one and two. Wind blowing a little bit. Also, maybe a bit of a factor today. It might affect players on the field on both sides. One, two. A little bit of a quick pitch this time, but it's down and in. Two and two. I think Bean was asking the umpire where it was at one. The umpire saying it was a little bit lower than the intended place in the zone. As the ball was below it. Two and two now. Now Hall is going to call time. That's a balk. Three to one. Bruins lead. I don't think the umpire liked what Osborne was doing with that super slow like motion wind up. Now, Osborne is a pitcher who will do that. He will try to alter the tempo of his delivery, and that's so what he'll do a lot to throw hitters. Timing's off. He won't be able to do it. Pitching from a stretch here. Hall under it into center field. Gliding to his left, making the play. Tyler Orff. That'll be the final out. Bruins get a run. The Bach as they strand two runners in scoring position and lead three to one as we go to the third.
All right, everyone, welcome to the top of the third. Bruins up 3-1 to one after getting a run in the bottom of the second on a balk by the Stallions pitcher, Reed Osborne, who is Wyatt Osborne's older brother. And Drum deals the first pitch in his third inning work and taken inside. That is a ball called. Want to know? I want to go back to that balk for a second. Now, in the bottom of the second, the Bruins score that run in the balk. Osborne, of course, I was talking about how he likes to alter, slow, and speed up his delivery to throw off hitters, as it's 2-0 here on Wyatt Osborne. Of course, I don't think the umpire called it fair. I think he called it a bit of an illegal move, slowing down way too much. And Osborne did too much of it. As there's one seared up the middle, past the diving Laskowski, a base hit for Wyatt Osborne out of the nine hole. And the Stallions have a leadoff runner on here to begin the top of the third. So I'm pretty sure that Reed Osborne on the mound later in the bottom of the inning and throughout the rest of the game that he, you know, in a time that he pitches. And Sarah Orf, Orpha, uh, Stallions leadoff hitters, they turn over now. We'll hit with one on, nobody out. It's just so interesting what Reed Osborne does, how well he craft, how well he executes his craftiness. That's really been something I think that, the Bruins, why he keeps the Bruins and other teams off balance a lot. That's why he's the South County ace because he just does it so well. Well, more than anybody else, there's a slider on or for strike one. He's white, and you don't, don't see a lot of other pitchers in a district nor in the region or really at all around here do that. Uh, Reed Osborne is quite the unique one. Of his own, 0-1. Oh, Ever slider misses to Orf, 1-1. One one. Throw back. Out in time. Oh, or Tyra Orf, a hitter up right now. Third year starting as a stallion center fielder starting a, since his freshman year. That's when his senior brother that year, South County Trevor Orff, still playing for SoCo, one and two here on Tyler. He's graduated, and Orff has become a solid everyday player for the Stallions. But not only that is a solid baseball player, he is an amazing, amazing wide receiver in football. He broke out this past season for a really good South County football team. It's always really good. Over a thousand yards, sixty catch on sixty catches and seven touchdowns. That's foul down a left field line. One and two still here on Orf. And he was also one of the main receiving weapons for Jordan Dennis and Jerry Pannoni, great South County head coach. And he'll still be there next year as a senior, both here on a field and on a baseball diamond. And on a football field as well. One, two. Swing and a miss. Orf down, swing, snap, throw back, not in time as Wide Osborne is safe at first. So one away as Tyler Orf strikes out. So David Perrin, South County right fielder, comes in now to hit. Was it at five foot seven, 130 pounds, first year on varsity? One of the many sophomores, two in their lineup tonight. Every guy is looking to become part of that young core, as I mentioned earlier. 0 and 1 as he swings and misses. Dropped by Hall. So Wyatt Osborne takes a bit of a lead off first. Throw back by Drum, not in time. So he keeps him in check. Knocked down there by Hall, one and one. And the wind is really picking up. Here. Sound like something 
down below us fell. Might have been a ladder or a few boxes in a room where below the press box they store all the field equipment and extra hats and stuff like that. Hopefully everything is okay down there. 1-1. One, one. There's a big curveball that is in there for a strike. 1-2 and two here on Perrin. See if Drummond can keep up the wind here. Against the Stallions offense. He's going to recalibrate a little bit as he did a little step off motion there. The one and two pitch. That ah, strike three on Perrin. Back to back for Orr via the fastball, two down here in the third. So this brings a B in. One on two out for Lake Braddock. Of course, B in is a guy who the Stallions won up. Continues success against Braddock as he had a double with two out in the top of the first. Pitch here. Swing and a miss. Tipped into a glove of Hall, and it's 0-1. Can he hit that walk-off hit on opening day back on March 12th at South County? Game was originally supposed to be hosted here at Braddock, but because Braddock's field wasn't ready due to bad weather conditions a few days before, they moved it to South County, and now they're hosting it here at Lake Braddock today, 0-1. This one scoots a bit past Hall, but not enough for... Osborne tried to get up to second, one and one. Bean has the power to tie the game with one swing of the bat. Off a guy like Jake Trump, that would surely be something to see. Pitch here. Not in time to Osborne. So he gets back. And Bian's going to call time. Never throw back. And again, back in time is Wyatt Osborne. So Drum, keeping a real close eye on him here with two out. 1-1 one, one here to be in. He cuts it foul, one and two. Put a good swing on that one. Drum steps off. One and two. Bruins lead three to one here in the top of the third. Runner on first two out for the Stallions. Looking to tie it here with their main power threat and being. One, two. Outside. Osborne's going to second throw by Hall. Not in time. As Wiskowski couldn't get the tag on the base runner. A stolen base for Osborne. So Drum paying quite a bit of attention at first with two out for that stolen base. And there, Osborne is able to show off his speed taken off, and he is successfully able to get in a scoring position. Count now two and two here on Bian. And Drum comes downhill, and that one fouled away. We well, didn't hit a fan out there. I don't think it did. He can put a good swing on it and it's still two and two. Yeah. 
Hall sets up outside. Drum a couple looks towards second. Here's a 2 2 pitch, curve ball. And being nifted a little bit to stay alive. Still in a 2 2 count here. Being putting up quite the battle. And Strum making them work right here. As he steps out for a second. He, and Drum fakes a runner back to second there. Stepped off the right ways. And didn't balk. Another 2 2 from Drum. Just off with a fastball. Three and two on Caden Bean. So, runner at second, we going. Three, two, two outs. And here's the payoff. Out off. And we'll do it again. Joey Osborne wasn't off there. Trying to get to third. Just took his normal lead. And Bian calls for a timeout. A lot of step-offs, a lot of timeouts at bat. Tells you how much Drum and Bean are trying to stay calm. Try to outdo one another. Free two, and this one off the glove on a line drive. Kicks off of Myers' glove and into left field, and scoring is Osborne. Free two, Wake Braddock on top. As the Stallions cut the deficit to one run. Bean does it again. That will go down as a hit for the Stallions as Bryce Whiteside comes up. Obian does it again. He's two for two off from this game and continues his damage against the Bruins. And Whiteside on an RBI double against Drum. I'll right, show you what he can do with his bat. And he's saying that he got hit by the pitch. He didn't swing. And Whiteside's still confused. Now he's down at first. So it is a hit by pitch, first and second, two out. So Whiteside on base for a second time in this one. The umpires are... Going to talk about that hit by pitch on white side here for this time right now. And South County now has Blake C again on second to courtesy run for B in. Coming into bat next for Stallions will be the first baseman, Tristan Deemer. Call stands. It is a hit by pitch. A little bit of confusion there. Now from up here, it did look like and sound like that it might have gotten the bat handle of Whiteside's bat, but the umpires obviously have a much better look as they're down in the field, and I'm up here in the press box, and they're saying that it's a uh, hit-by-pitch, of course, and Yohan Thompson, the Bruins head coach, is going to talk with the umpire about this, and where it was. Try to get an understanding for what was going on. And better of it. 
So that's done now. Now Deemer will step in. So the Stallions have the tying run on second, the go-ahead run at first. First and second, two men out for him here in the top of the third. And Drum is going to fake C back to second for courtesy runner. So the Stallions getting some good hits off Drum. You don't see that often. Drum gives up a lot of hard hits like that to a lot of guys inside to Deemer here, and it's 1-0. When I see Drum usually dominating a lot. That's what he's done this season. And he's shut down teams with better records this season in South County. And South County just right here showing what they're made of and how much they have improved. Again, if you're hitting a guy like Drum fastball in there, one and one, you can't preach it any better than that. South County team has gone through a lot of chemistry problems. Their previous head coach, problems with their work ethic for mentality the last couple of years, and ever since Coach Warren has come in to head coach for a stallion that has just done nothing but improve. As one and two, Deemer swings late at that one, and Drum is one strike away from getting out of trouble here. Coach Warren showing you what long way these Stallions have been coming. They look to be a rising team in a few years. They look to compete with some of the on the heights that Lake Braddock and West Springfield have been achieving. One, two, fouled off the screen. Drops near the Bruins dugout. Still one and two. Deemer, five foot eleven, near two hundred pound senior first baseman. Now we pick off row to first. He's safe. And Drum try to get him at first. Look towards second first, and then thought he had a chance at first. Their white side was leaning a little bit. He didn't get him. So still 1-2 here on Deemer. Drum looking got off trouble. And poked foul. Still 1-2. and two. Drum sets and deals again. One, two. In play, Drum off a mound and tosses on to Quadros at first, and Drum works out of further trouble. So Stallions get one run. They strand two. So they cut the deficit to only a one run lead for Bruins. They lead free two as we go to the bottom of third here at Lake Braddock.
All right, everyone, welcome to a bottom of third. Bruins lead 3 2 over with Stallions here. Stallions got one run in the top of the third to cut the 3 1 deficit. If they had the 3 2, swing and a miss by Drum. First pitch from Osborne. 0 and 1 as Reed is in his third inning of work against this Bruins offense. 4 5 and 6 for Bruins to up. Drum, Edwithson. And Dom Quadros quickly down here in a hole. 0-2 is Drum. Who Drum, of course, the Bruins starting pitcher on the mound today. Uh, wow, two runs so far to Stallions. They've been getting some good hits off him offensively. 0-2. He's going to hang a curveball in the air and lift it out of play. Still 0-2 on him. So, uh, Ace pitcher versus ace pitcher matchup here. Reed Osborne, South Carolina ace, going up against the Lake Braddock ace, Jake Drum. 0 2. Inside to him, 1 and 2. Now, of course, in terms of hitter profile, Drum seems to be the guy who has more of a better hitting skills since he's in the Bruins one pitting cleanup, as Reed Osborne is completely absent from the Stallions lineup altogether, 1 and 2. Inside again for fastball. Count levels at two and two now. Now a two two. Up and away, three and two. So, zero oh and two. He had drum. Some good location on him. Got a swing and a miss. Now Drummond's being able to work it back full. He's taking some nice pitches on free straight fastballs. Free two. Inside two and fastball again. Wyatt Osborne trying to help Reed out in the whites there. And he had a little trouble with it, but he makes the play one down on a pop out to shortstop. Good play there by the younger Osborne. And hauling it in. Keeping enough sight on it for out number one. Here's Edwison up now. Everyone's DH. Osborne going for slower tempo here. As Edwison to foul it up in the air. And it runs out of play. 0-1-1. And if you're a, spe if you're a specialist in a sense, like Reed Osborne, that you're going to really mess up hitters' timing, slowing down and really speeding up your tempo of your delivery. There's a change up swung on and missed there by Edwison Owen, too. You really want to keep hitters off base because with that, you're not really going to be able to alter your tempos. you got to pitch from a stretch more, and that, of course, doesn't allow you to change the speed of your delivery nearly as effectively. And that's strike free. Curveball gets Edwison as... Osborne gets him on free pitches, two away. So Osborne already two up, two down for him in the bottom of the third here as Dom Quadros comes up. Of course, the Bruins want to get those base runners on so they can throw Osborne off. It's their best bet. Fish shot, diving, knocked down, and no play. By Yassi at third. And that'll go as a base hit for Dom Quadros with two out. You've like almost half of Ruins hits have come on. Have been infield hits tonight. And here's Matt Mayer. Big power fret for Ruins hitting seventh and playing third base. First pitch here from Osborne. Drilled and foul. That one way down left field line. Out of play, 0-1. Um, Mayor, this is his first start in a while. It's the last few games. Braden Gibson has started at third base for the Bruins. He's sophomore. He didn't have the sharpest game against Fairfax on Monday, especially defensively, as he committed two errors. So the only two errors Bruins had in a game, 0-2 here on Mayors. He's quickly behind against Osborne. And so Bruins will change their plan today and go with 
Matt Mayer of a junior. 0-2. Inside to him, 1-2. and two. Mayer has a lot more power than Gibson does, who's a lot more contact-oriented in his swing. One, two from Osborne. And that hit him. Second hit batsman of the game. And that's actually the second time he's, I believe, hit Matt Mayer. So two on, two out for Bruins. Number eight hitter and freshman Ryan Harding will come to a plate. So no matter what Reed Osborne's been throwing to Mayer at the plate tonight, He's just plunked him in both at bats, and it's been in the righty's batter's box. Been right in contact, the Bruins third baseman and being and Reed Osborne going to have a talk here. So a bit unlucky for Mayer tonight, getting hit by two, getting hit by pitches in two of his at bats or plate appearances rather, but. He'll still take it as he gets on base. Each time does not seem to be too shaken about all by any of the balls he's been hit by. Pitch here to Harding. Curveball is a strike 0 and 1 as Osborne will start him backwards here. Everyone's looking for some a two out rally. And some insurance. We more than only we lead, lead by one right now. Oh one Harding is flight out of play. Oh and two. Oh two shot from Osborne. Cracked on the ground. Surrounding Osborne Hole goes to get the lead runner at third, and he does. That's a great play, ranging in a hole by White Osborne, throwing down to his first baseman, Yassi, and to get a lead runner, Dom Quadros, on the force to end the inning. So Bruins got a couple runners with two out, but cannot score. They still lead 3-2 as we go to the top of the fourth. Hi right, everyone, welcome to the top of the fourth. Trevion Campbell, the Stallion second baseman, due up to begin the inning against Jake Drum, forfeiting a work for him tonight. First pitch, spun up in the air off a swing and out of play. 0 and 1 here on Campbell. Bruins currently lead 3 to 2, had a chance with first and second, two out in the bottom third, but could not scratch any runs across as Wide Osborne, the Stallion shortstop, made a great play and a hole to get the 
Weed runner Dom Quadros at third, trying to advance with two out, one and one here on Campbell. And drum sets off here, and it's for Drum today. Giving up two runs in the first three innings he's pitched. Outside, two and one as Campbell draws ahead here. I'm pretty sure Drum having one of his more, a bit more, one of his inauspicious starts might be the weather affecting him too. A bit windy and moist out here, so maybe it's affecting his grip. Two and two on a fastball here to Campbell. And we'll try to work through that. Of course, he is a big workhorse, especially in a lot of pressure. And he knows how to work through it well and put that. It's good advantage and a strikeout. Big cut there by Campbell as he comes up empty and one away here in the top of the four for the Stallions offense. Here is Michael DeVore. Last time up against Drum. Battled in a good at bat against the Bruins ace. But it came up empty against him. So he's now over one today. This will be a second at bat for him now. Pitch here from Drum. Swing and a miss. Up and in, and it's 0-1. Here's the 0-1. Fastball plucked on a screen, 0-2. You compare Drum and Osborne, both pitchers, both aces for these teams going at it tonight. Of course, Osborne is much more craftier. Speeding up, slowing down his delivery again to try to throw off hitters and get outs. This one goes through the wickets of Hall as it's one and two here on DeVore. While Drum, he doesn't usually slow, stop, and try to speed up his motions on a mound. He does do it very effectively, though, as he barely walks anybody and has masterful control. He throws a fastball very hard and usually at a speed that a lot of high school pitchers can't control as DeVore goes down swinging two away and two strikeouts to begin the inning for Drum. So here is Luca Yassi, third baseman. Batting with two out, nobody on for Stallions as the Bruins lead three to two. Strike one here to the Stallions' third baseman. So fastball been working well for Drum quite a few times tonight. Mixing in some off speeds too. 0 1. This one world foul. 0 2 on a swing by Yasi. Drum looking to strike out the side here. Coming with the 0-2. And a slider is picked up by Hall outside, 1-2. and two. You know, number one, two, or no, one, two on the way. Gets it in there again with a slider. And this time he gets strike free. The last one was outside, but he gets it on the zone this time. And he strikes out the side. Six, seven, eight hitters go down in the Stallions order. We go to bottom of fourth as Drum holds the lead for a Bruins. They lead three to two.
All right, bottom of fourth, nine, one, and two for Bruins to do up. George Waskowski and Shave as the lineup turns over. Osborne in there for his fourth inning of work on a night. 1 0 on the first pitch to Evan George, the Bruins number nine hitting center fielder. Drum Bruins pitcher. It's a great one, two, three top before. Struck out Salian six through eight hitters. With CK beside. 1 1 as that one clips the outside corner on George. Oh, look, might have looked in the batter's box a little bit. Uh, the umpire still says it's a strike anyway. 1-1 one, one here to George. And that one brought down in for a strike two by BN. Now, uh, George would be a perfect guy. Bruins would want to get on if he gets on base, and it would turn off the crafty ways of Osborne slowing and speeding up his delivery. 1-2. Oh, almost hit him. Backs out of that. Curveball that missed badly, and it's two and two. Glad little fellow's okay there in the box. George getting on base here. He could really put some pressure on Osborne, and with his speed and give the Bruins some insurance if he scores. And that one is going to be in the right for a base hit. And now some hesitation by Whiteside, and George gets to second. That's how George puts pressure, and he does just that. As that sets up, or the guy no one wants to face and Jamie Laskowski as the Bruins lineup turns over. It was such a great job by George with a heads-up base running. He took it to see in right field that white side made a muff on that ball, and he decided to get to second, and he knew with his speed he was going to make it, and that gets him in scoring position. So George is, of course, able to throw off Osborne, get him into the stretch, and you're going to intentionally walk Wiskowski here. They'd much rather face Matt Shabe, of course. Yay. Not for Fred Vat Wiskowski, not as much as uh, Fred as Wiskowski is at the plate, but Shape does have a RBI triple today against Osborne. Pitch here, curveball just a bit high to him, one and zero. So Shape has also had some success against Osborne, but he had to choose. Probably be Shabby we want to face instead of Jamie. Just the way he swings the bat. Now Shabe scoring the bunt against Reed Osborne here. Both corner infielders coming in for Stallions. That one almost missed him. Now way off the bag is George, but he gets back in time. 2-0 here on Shabe. So Osborne, when he was bowing George to start the inning, First battery face, he almost hit him with a curveball. That one looked like a fastball to Shabe, but still. And so looking like he's losing a little bit of his grip. 2-0. was able to get the zone there on the outside corner. So fastball was in there for a strike. 2-1. and one. Also a quick flurry of rain drops that just came in. A few of the fans had to put their umbrellas out. And these two teams are trying to finish this game in any way they can so we don't push it off any further. Both have very busy schedules coming up. Throw by White Osborne in time for this out at second now. Throw to third. He's out too. And the lead runner for a Bruins livid with himself there. So that is a double play, a bit inauspicious on how they turned it. And now that is a race is a big chance for Bruins now. And Shea breaches with two out. So Jamie Wiskowski was out on the force play at second and then a throw to third. George. 
try to take advantage with his speed. And you could see he was livid because he was out as he banged his fist on the bases. We have a mound conversation going on here with Reed Osborne, Stallion, and the Stallions infield in there. And uh, Chris Warren, too, uh, go over a two out game plan here for Hall. But with George, you're going to take chances like that, especially with his speed and with the situation of the game, with the Bruins only leading by a run. And it was a good shot, but he was just out. I don't think it was really that. It wasn't really that bad of a move by George, but it was to no avail. It was good thinking by him to use his speed, but again, just was out at third. Good throw by the Stallions defense and got him in time. As this one is down a right field line, that is going to stay fair, and it goes into the corner. Here is Shea being waved home all the way from first. He scores an RBI double for Podrick Hall, 4-2 Lake Braddock. So after that double play, that was, an, that was turned in an unorthodox fashion by the Stallions. Paul, who was so clutch, gets an RBI double with two out to give the Bruins a 4-2 to lead and double it. And now the Bruins pitcher and hitting cleanup is Jake Drum, who's coming up. So this is Ferda Bat coming up against Osborne. Looks like Aiden Wolf at second is in a pinch run, and they're going to intentionally walk Jake Drum here. Aiden Wolf in at second for Paul to courtesy run. And Robert pitched to Mac Edwison, who's had some more success against. Actually, Aiden Wolf is coming on to courtesy run for Drum now, I beg your pardon. So Edwison in here now. And the last time he faced Osborne, he struck uh, Osborne struck him out on three pitches. A couple good off speed pitches away. Osborne won that battle. And Edwison looking to get redemption. Left center field. And this one's gonna drop in. Here comes. The lead runner to the plate, he'll score. Number 21, moving up to second is Wolf. It is an RBI single for Edwison. Bruins lead 5-2 to two as they're corking off Osborne here in the fourth. Now, Osborne, who hasn't had the most, who's had a lot of success against the Bruins offense. This is certainly a night where Bruins have really figured him out a lot more. And getting base runners on and string together hits to really throw off that crafty delivery that he has and his crafty skills 0-1 as Dom Quadro swings and misses at the slider from Osborne. And Bruins have five runs off him now. That's a sure sign to see. Bruins finally... Getting something good together against a South County pitcher that they have not has nearly as much success against other pitchers that they have faced. One and one here on Quadros. Here's a one one foul ball, and it's one and two. Here on Quadros, looking to 
Keep the Bruins two-out rally going. Already had two. As Osborne has kind of come apart more so here in the bottom of fourth against Lake Braddock. Pitch here on the way. That hit him. Wadros takes that like a champ on a helmet. It was a breaking ball, so it did not have much force to Quadros' head and did not pick him up really. So Mayer comes up with two out. And this and Osborne, strangely enough, this is the guy that Rita's hit twice tonight. So Mayer looking to put a good swing on one and look to get Osborne back for hitting him twice right here. Aces loaded and two out for Lake Braddock. Pitch from Osborne here. Popped up on the first pitch. Deemer in foul ground from first. And that's a play that he makes for a final out. He had to come back on a ball a little bit and step back about a f by a foot. But as he had a little trouble seeing it, and I think the wind played a bit of a factor, but he still able to make the play. And the Bruins strand a base loaded to end the inning. However, they get two runs to extend their lead of 5-2 from 3-2, which is their lead going into the bottom of fourth. And the Bruins have some run support for Drum. So we buy three. Here at Lake Braddock. All right, everyone, welcome to the top of the fifth. Ruins lead 5-2 after they scored two two-out runs in the bottom frame to give Drum more run support as he now has a free run lead to work with instead of a one. And Osborne corks this, but a line drive right at the hands of Shabe, who grabs it one away. So wide Osborne, who's put some really good swings on drum tonight. Both well-hit line drives. First one is a hit, and that one is a line out to second. And the Bruins ace immediately gets an out. Lineup turns over for Tyler Orff. Stallions lead off hitting center fielder for about a day. First pitch from drum. Outside, 1-0. and oh, Or that's a strike. Sorry. 0-1 oh, here on Orff. Orff 0 for 2 today against drum. A fly out. And a strikeout, which came in as the last at bat. One and one here on Orf. Drum in his fifth inning of work now. Two wow, two runs on four hits. No errors for Bruins. One and two on that slider there to Orf. And for Lake Braddock, five runs on four hits. More of a scoring contest, of course, and a hitting contest. This one pumped foul by Orff. Still one and two on him. Orff is a hitter. Has uh, some nice extra base power. And of course, being a big wide receiver threat in football. On all state honorable mention this past fall for playing for South County's football team. He's going to have a lethal 
amount of speed, and he will fly around the bases if he gets on one, two. That is ruled a foul ball. As you got still got a piece of it to stay alive. Still one and two. One and two, two tower Orf, and this one flinged up and out of play. Still one and two. A little bit of wind still going here at Burke. Here's a one-two from Drum again. Check swing. Home plate umpire is saying he went around strike free. And Orf looks like some choice words from himself. Is he frustrated, very frustrated with himself. So he strikes out two away. Orf is kind of a hothead. He will uh take a lot on himself, swing and a miss. And have a bottom drop out of it, 0-1-1. Here to David Perrin. Number two hitting left right fielder for the Stallions. A one. Dug up by Paul Ver below the zone. One and one. It's a one one on the way. There's a strike one and two. So Drum, one pitch away from working back-to-back -back one, two free innings. One, two. Swing and a miss. A line out and two strikeouts in the inning for Drum, and he gets another one, two free inning for himself and his Bruins. We go to the bottom of the fifth, Lake Braddock looking to add more. So they lead five to two. All right, bottom of the fifth. Lake Braddock leading five to two. Jake Drum pitched another one, two, free inning in the top of the fifth. He's pitched two straight in a row and has looked much better after he gave up two runs in the first three. Pitched two scoreless straight now. Harding, check swing, and he went around at Says 
The umpire at first, 0 and 1. This is eight, nine, and one for Bruins. Do up 0 1. Up and away, 1 and 1. And Reed Osborne is still in there. Stallions still looking to get some work out of him as long as he can keep him in the game. They'll have him go a little bit more, 1 1. Hanged it up and inside, not hitting the zone. Two and one as Harding draws ahead here. Bruins have five runs and nine hits off the Stallions' righty ace. Two one. Strike on a corner. Two and two here to Harding. Two, two, and that one is wrecked in the center field. It's played on a hop by Orff and a leadoff single for Ryan Harding, the freshman. To begin the bottom of fifth, and Evan George comes up. We're going to have a conference on a mound. And let's see if this will do it for Osborne. And it will. So Reed Osborne's day is done. Not the most ideal outing for him. Giving up five runs on ten hits after the leadoff single to Harding. As the Bruins have hit Osborne probably the best that they ever have. And with this, the Stallions will go to the bullpen. 5-2, Bruins have a runner on first. No out. Stay with us here on the Lake Braddock Student Broadcasting YouTube channel. All right, new pitcher on the mound for the Stallions is Tristan Deemer, who was originally the starting first baseman for South County, and now he will start throwing on the mound now as Reed Osborne is taken out. First throw back to Harding is not in time. Evan George do up, Bruins lead 5-2 here in the bottom of the fifth. Five runs on ten hits off. 
Sauk County starter, Reed Osborne. Redeemer of a lefty who froze and hits left-handed inside to George, 1-0 on him. Deemer as a pitcher will get more strikeouts than an inning. So he does have some good whip. So he does get some good whiffs and has high whiff rates at times. 1-0. Fouled off by George. 1-1. One one. It's Jamie Waskowski. We're going to get the ball. See so Stu up next. Everyone star shortstop. One one. Popped and out of play. A couple young fans running for the ball, seeing if they can who who can get it first. One and two. So that one went out of play. Pretty sure the wind had a little bit in the cold weather. Had a bit to do with Osborne struggling inside to George 2-2. Two and two, But an even bigger sign for Bruins as they've been able to hit Osborne really well. And get a big lead. Now it's actually not a big lead. They only lead by three. But big enough for them to feel a bit more comfortable. Slow ball to short. Bears one. Campbell. A throw to first, and George reaches on a fielder's choice as the throw isn't in time. Wind up turns over for Jamie Wiskowski now. In this lefty on lefty matchup. So, big task here for Deemer. Keeping this game in check and, face Jay and facing Wiskowski. Now, the Bruit, but now the Stallions did intentionally walk Wiskowski his last time up against Osborne, but it doesn't look like they're going to right now. Now that they feel more comfortable Deemer for lefty on a lefty matchup. Pickoff throw is not in time to first. As getting back is Harding. Dribbler. Deemer off the mound. Airs it over first. This one up for first baseline. Here comes Harding, hustling around the bases. He scores. Wiskowski to third. 6-2 Bruins. Oh, Albie scored as a single and an error. I don't think Wiskowski gets the RBI on that. That's... Bruins with a four-run lead now. And that's the first error committed for either side tonight. Matt Shea will come up as the Stallions will bring the infield closer in here. Lefty-lefty matchup. Scott's not making great contact. There's just a dribbler on the ground. Both his speed put pressure on Deemer to make the quick throw to first, and he couldn't. And Shabe holds up well on that one as it Came inside on him, 1-0. Oh. Foul ball, 1-1. One and one. Looks like David Perrin, the starting right fielder for the Stallions, is... Taken over in at first base as Deemer is now coming on the mound. Kind of hard to see who's in right field, however. And update on that once we know who's out there. This is blooped, and with the infield playing in, no one's going to get it. 7 2 Bruins. Waskowski scores. An RBI single for Matt Shave, his second of the game. Bruins lead by five. So Pat Hall coming up to a plate now. He's driven in a run this game for the Bruins. Him in the bottom of first on a sacrifice fly to left field.
up and away with a fastball. One and zero. Overall, for to really talk about Bruins getting more distance between them and the Stallions in this game now leading by five. This was at least in the first couple of matchups between these two teams last year. Wasn't as much uh, more of a so of a theme as time is called here by Pod Hall. And last year, you know, at least in the first couple of matchups, these two teams played a lot closer. No one was getting off to big leads through most of the innings that they played, and for South County, it'd be an inning or two where the inning where it would just all fall apart, apart for him. Curveball on the outside corner, and it's one and one here on Hall. That's what for Bruins did. They took advantage of those mishaps by the Stallions in those innings where they did really mess up last year. 1 1. Pumped foul by Hall here. 1 and 2. That was more so something you saw in the latter innings that these two teams played, but in the earlier innings, it was a lot more tighter, as I said. And tonight, more so. It's been in Bruins, except for one inning, which was the bottom of third. They've scored at least one run in each inning that they've played. One, two is a pickoff move back to first to keep Laskowski or Shave there. Sorry. One, two. Another hard hack, and it's fouled off by Hall. Still one and two. Bottom of the fifth here. One on, one out for the Bruins. They lead by five, seven to two. One, two here to Hall. Going to take it to a pull side this time, and he... Has another foul ball, and he's hit. Stay alive. If Paul has another RBI or two in the game. Came earlier. After the sack fly he had in the bottom of first. One, two. Inside now it's two and two as the count levels. So I want to send out a quick congrats to Lake Braddock's varsity softball team, who's playing away at South County tonight. It's always a big matchup when those two teams get together in softball, especially over the last decade or so. You know, this uh, last couple of years, South County softball team hasn't been as cleaners. Could be two. There's one on a first four six three double play that ends the inning. Bruins, however. Score two runs to extend the lead to 7-2. Uh, we'll go to the top of the six now as the Bruins lead by five. But overall, big congrats to Wake Braddock's softball team and winning 14-1 tonight as they keep rolling. They're now 10-2. and two. Bruins look and Bruins in baseball looking to improve to 7-5. and five. So They might have a lead to do it as we go to the sixth.
All right, top of the six, quickly 0 and 2. Here on Caden Bean, the South County catcher. New pitcher in a game for V. Bruins is Oliver Crandall, junior righty in relief of Drum, who's pitched a nice five innings, a two run ball. Gave up two in the first three innings he pitched, but then settled down. One and two here on Bean. Drum settled down in the next two, pitching two scoreless after that and retiring the signs in order one, two, three in those innings, too. Now I'll turn it over to righty Crandall. Crandall has appeared for Bruins this year on a mound. He pitched a great game in a spring break tournament at, against Westfield. 1-2. And that got a piece of B in as he's hit by the pitch. And it'll take first to lead off the top of the sixth. And Bruins won that game 9-2 as Crandall pitched extremely well. He's got a nice left fielder, Bryce right side. Movement to his fastball. As Bryce White sidesteps in now. White side, one of the two RBIs in this game. RBI double off drum in the top of the first. Pitch here. I don't know. Randall really does shock with that ball and really winds back in his delivery. It's also pretty fast, too, as he works from a stretch. No matter what. One no here on white side. Snap for a by Halls. It's outside for a ball and not in time to get runner leading at first. That's B in. The Stallions not choosing to go to a courtesy runner to replace him at the first base. I don't see that. They're going to do that when they're down by five. Pro. And that's high past Quadros. And in E1, we'll allow B and we'll move up to second. So the Stallions got a man in scoring position with nobody out. So 2 0 here on white side. Overhead of Quadros there. And just not greatest move there by Crandall. Crandall usually also plays the outfield. We've seen him play there for Bruins a few times this year. Two zero, breaking ball up three and zero. Really talk about Stallions getting down this lead. Now this is not good for them as they. We'll slow down for momentum. Already lost to Woods in the last game. As for Bruins, it'll, they'll be picking up. As if they hold on to win, they'll be on a two-game winning streak. South County will lose another one if they don't hold on. As Whiteside walks here, they got first and second. Nobody out. So Crandall struggling here a little bit, coming out of a bullpen for Lake Braddock. Now here's Deemer, the once first base from the game. Now pitcher will come in to hit. Came really for uh, Reed Osborne in the bottom of the fifth. It's also really Stallion's team that really hasn't been competitive since really 2013 and time of the late 2000s and early 2010s where they were just as competitive as Braddock has always been. Always in a favorites to make the state titles. A little bit of uh, West Springfield vibes they had too in that same aspect. And since then, they've only had a few five. They've had some seasons. They finished 500 or well below it. This one is poked hard, but fouled off by Deemer, and it's 0 and 1. And so the Stallions, hopefully, with this new core coming on, will form something. They've got some good chemistry. Chris Warren's taken a good job of. Forming that. Here's the old one from Crandall. Breaking ball is to the backstop. Comes back in front of Hall. And out will move up everyone. It's a wild pitch. Second and third. Nobody out for the Stallions. Here in the top of six. Still nobody out. 
I wonder if Crandall is struggling with gripping the ball a little bit. Pretty wide there. On a throw to the plate, and then on the pickoff throw to first earlier in the inning. One one with Don and uh, Deemer got a piece of it. Still one and two. Really good examples of how, how I mentioned earlier, the Stallions team wasn't really good in the best of minds. Former head coach is now on Alexandria City's staff, so he stays in the district. Uh, there just wasn't really a lot going on with him. He didn't really. And that one is gone. That's a free run home run for Deemer. He's got power, hits it off Crandall. It's a 7-5 game now. Deep to right, and it's out. Stallions now down only by two. We talk about chemistry coming alive. This is the best time. If they would want it. Seven to five, and of course, some of the examples of those chemistry problems, sometimes they just wouldn't want to do a specific drill. And sometimes, you know, the coaches would say, hey, we're doing this drill. This is what we're doing. And just a lot of the times the previous players be reluctant to do that because the code with previous head coach didn't implement such a the best mindset and mentality. And that's why South County struggled a lot in the last few years. And again, if they keep coming up in big moments like this, they're they're gonna it'll come alive well. So good site for the Stallions, not the best site there for the Bruins. That's I believe Deemer's second home run of the year. He tagged it well off Oliver Crandall. It's not had a good start to this inning. Still nobody out. Lost two base runners and then a free run home run. Trophy and Campbell, the hitter now. Of course, in terms of Lake Braddock chemistry, they always have it. It really seems to be such a big problem for them. It's been a reason why they are always so successful every season that comes their way. You're going to try using that to good advantage to try to still win it. So South County previously down by five, now only down by two. It's a 7-5 Bruins lead. Cheer from Crandall is fouled off by Campbell, and it's 0-1-1. Ball went out like an Austin Goffier swing off about of Deemer. There's the 0 and 1. Slider in there. It's a strike. Down in the count quickly 0 and 2. Of course, Goffier, former South County player. A triple A, a dot, triple A team for Dodgers right now. Talk about the big strides he's making. Seems to be a player might just make the big league team as throw down the first year in time from Hall. And there's a strikeout, one away here in the top of the six for South County. This brings up Michael DeVore, the sophomore DH now. One on nobody out for South County. So Crandall, that strikeout. Hugh Campbell, that's what he might need to really get his stuff going. First pitch to DeVore here. Fastball, and that's going to loop, and that ball will fall fair. Down in the right field, Johnson throws back in. And a single with one out for Michael DeVore. So here's Luca Iassi, third baseman. So not the most hard hit ball there by DeVore. Still able to keep it fair and get a base hit out of it. And 
And Bruins for now will let Crandall try to work out of this. So he's facing the bottom part of the Stallions order. And Matt Montague will come on and pinch run at first. Montague, a junior. Strike there. To Yassi, and it's 0 1. Oh, one curve ball up, throw back to first by Hall, not in time. One and one here on Yassi. One one swing and a miss. Seems like that breaking stuff by Crandall is really what he's got working for him here. Getting some swings and misses in a sinning. One and two. He's looking for a big strikeout here. Against the Stallions third baseman. One and two on away. Oh, that was a nasty curveball. Inside, and he got him on a... Silly swing, two away. Second strikeout of the inning for Crandall. This will bring up the number nine hitter, Wyatt Osborne. Shortstop, Wyatt Osborne. Stallion shortstop. A younger Osborne brother looking to do something with two out. He's had two really good line drive. Hit balls off the Bruins ace, Jake Drum, today when he was in. That one is backhanded low by Hall, 1-0. One was a base hit up the middle, and then the other one was a line out to second. And this is Wyatt Osborne's third at bat. One out. There's a strike in the outside corner, one and one. So Wyatt Osborne starting at shortstop today for the Stallions. He also can pitch just like his brother, and also just like Reed. He's got some very good stuff, and... Good stuff enough to probably become the to be ace to succeed his older brother once he graduates after this year, potentially one and two. Breaking ball dropped in on the outside corner. So it was a curve. And Crandall one strike away from working out of further trouble here in the top of the sixth. Stallions have a runner on with two out. Crandall ahead in a one-two count. Now he throws to Osborne. It's a breaking ball, and Osborne knew it was coming. He's going to get a base hit up the middle. Warning up at second is Montague, and this will be the situation for Tyra Orff. He's coming in for his fourth about of the day. Bruins have not used the mound visit yet to talk to Crandall in this inning so far. Letting him kind of just do his own thing out there right now and try to work his way out of it with the help from his teammates on the field. Not as much led by the coaches that he has in the dugout. First pitch here to Orff. Slider low, 1 0. Airs when I pins the zone on the outside, one and one. Orff has some extra base power. 
And two pretty fast guys on with two out. If he gets one in a gap, it probably ties the game. Four speed. He could really make a lot of trouble occur for the Bruins on defense. And he gets the time earned there, as he calls it. One one. There was slider and dirt by Crandall. Two and one here on Orf. Almost nine o'clock. So it's currently eight fifty seven Eastern time right now. Things have been going on for nearly two and a half hours. 2-1. It's become exciting. There's one down a left field line, and it's going to be foul. Ooh, Orf tagged that one well. But too early on the swing, and he can't keep it fair, so it's 2-2 two and two on him. See if we can get that same contact and same distance on this next swing, but keep it inside one of the bags. First and second, two out for the Stallions. Montague off second, Osborne off first. Two two from Crandall. Tried with Swider again, and Orff hasn't taken a bite at it. Three and two. Don't pay off pitch. Will be coming here. And Crandall deals the payoff. In the left field and over the leap of Laskowski. This is a one run game. Montague scores, throwing a third. Wyatt Osborne safe. RBI single, Tyler Orff. 7 6. As the Bruins now only lead by one. And Crandall still not out of the woods yet. Hitter coming up is David Perrin. And Hall will go out and have a talk with him. So someone is gonna finally gonna have a conversation with. Crandall out there. And it's Hall, his battery mate. Bruins, of course, haven't talked to Crandall on the mound. No, and Thompson just watching his team from the third base side in foul ground. So Bruins head coach. OV tying run on third. A go ahead run at first for South County. And he almost balked there. Nearly. That could have tied the game, but careful job here by Crandall not to. He keeps this a Bruins lead. Pitch. First one apparent is a fastball for strike one. So a young Stallions lineup. Doing well, clawing her way back into it. Down 7 2 going to sitting, scored four now in the inning. Now it's 7 6. Fly ball towards the left field line, long run. Harding, he's got it in foul ground. What a play by Ryan Harding. Making that catch to end the inning. 
And a sensational play by the freshman. Works the Bruins out of trouble. Stallions, however, score four runs to get back in it. So they only trail by one, 7-6 Bruins. As we go to bottom of six, Lake Braddock on offense looking for more run support. Stay with us. All right, bottom of six, four, five, and six for Bruins to do up. Drum, Ed Whitson, and Dom Quadros. Wake Braddock currently leads seven to six. And once we had seven to two going into the top of the sixth inning, but four runs scored by the Stallions in the inning, made it a one run game. So Tristan Deemer came on to pitch in the fifth, still on for the Stallions. Looking to keep his team in this one. First pitch is a strike to drum, 0-1-1. Deemer, of course, in the top of the six, hit a massive free-run home run to cut the Stallions' deficit after time from five to two, five runs to two runs. And quickly ahead here in a Bruins ace pitcher, 0-1-2. Drum out of the game now. Pitching. Still hitting, though. 0-2. From Deemer and just missed on the back door piece. One and two here on Jake Drum. Begin setting up inside and this one outside. Two and two. Or one and two. Or yeah, two and two. Scoreboard was wrong. Had me guessing. 2-2 two, two from Deemer. Drum waits back on that one and fouls it off. Still 2-2. Two and two. Drum fighting hard here against Deemer to lead off getting 2-2. Two, two. Up. And three and two. Pull down off the mound by Deemer. Not the cleanest. And Drum, who was down 0-2, is now in the full count. Three and two. Payoff from Deemer. That's a good take. Ball four. As that pitch was low. And Drum walks to lead off the inning. That's exactly... The way the Bruins want to start it. Now here comes a big lefty fret, McLean Edwison, in the box now. That's what he can do against this lefty in Deemer. He tries bunting, and ooh, he almost got hit. Had to roll out of the way on a and fell to the dirt on that one. 1-0. One oh. Thankfully, Edwison did not get hit. Had some good reaction time on that one. And he's all right. So he's already had to undergo Tommy John surgery this season. That would have not been a good sight to see if he had gotten 
hit really hard on that one. One and one. So that one catches a corner. Looks like he's going to bunt here now, even with his power. He more so uh, favors right-handed pitching a lot better than lefties, so that's probably why he's going with a bunt here. Try to get the speedy drum in a scoring position. Of course, only a good pitcher, good hitter, but he can also run a lot too as he's come on to courtesy run quite a few times for Bruins in the past. From lead off first, and this one fought off to short. Osborne forced at second for one, and Edelson the first beats it out. Reaches first on the fielder's choice. Salians get drum at second, the short way, and one down for Dom Quadros. Bruins first baseman. Hitting with one on and one out. what he can do. First pitch from Deemer. Backdoor breaking ball is a strike 0-1. Our Bruins and have had a lot of one-run contests this year. And they and to start in the first half, they have not won a lot of them. Now that's not saying if the Bruins have been bad this year or anything, but certainly they've had wanted to win a lot of those close games, have a much better record than they had in the first half, 0-2, as Quadro swings through that one. So this is never so here they have a one run lead. They're seeing if they can hold on to it themselves instead of going the other way around and the other team having a one run lead on the Bruins. Throw back to first and drum gets back safely. Most of the reasons think it would be there's since been a few costly timely pitches have cost the Bruins and a couple iffy defensive plays. Of cost them in those one run contest. 0 2 swung on and missed. So two away now as Deemer picks up the strikeout against Quadros. And now the baton is passed to Matt M Meyer. It's actually Mayer, the correct pronunciation. Beg your pardon. Oh. Mayer, some power in his bat. One swing. He takes. Strike one in the slider there. He could really pummel it out and give the Bruins back some much-needed insurance. 0-1. Oh, Up and in. 1-1 one and one here on Mayer. Bruins, of course, looking to pull through and so continuing their momentum. This one in the left. They'll stay in the yard and wind up to make the play is Whiteside, and that'll end the inning. Bruins strand one on here in the bottom of six. They still have a lead. So they're up 7 6. We go to the seventh, and the Bruins are looking to shut this one down. Stay with us. Got an exciting one here at Lake Braddock in the late innings.
All right, top of the seventh, Ruins looking to shut it down. May will turn to their shortstop, Jamie Wiskoski, to get the save. So here's Caden Bean, who's up. Second at bat. Just a matter of two innings for him. Take strike one from Wiskoski. 7-6, Bruins lead. Of course, Wiskoski on Monday pitched the shutout against Fairfax. Big win that day as the Bruins went on to emerge victorious 5-0 as Bean calls time here. Ian has reached base all three times versus Lake Braddock in this one. A one here from Jamie. Slider on the outside corner for a strike 0 and 2. Jamie, hitting wise, has been on base but a few times today, like usual. Never Jamie yes day for him as he aims to be player of the year. Oh, come on. Big situation. Try to get me safe. 0 2. Swing and a miss. How about. Vatty strikes out Kane Bean, who's really had the Bruins number. And there's one away as it was tipped into a glove of Pod Hall. Two, two outs remaining for South County. Here's Whiteside. Clean up hitting left fielder for the Stallions. So drum right at, or Wiskowski right out of the gate, I beg your pardon. Are you showing some very sharp stuff? Cheer on away. He'll down to first and saying he went around. 0-1-1 here on white side. Well, Wisconsin started at short. Matt Shea moves over there, and then Jake Drum is at second. So a couple new names up the middle in this 101. Wait off of that time, 1-1. One and one. The Bruins, of course, led by five at one point, and then the Stallions have V4 run six. Got the Deficit to only one run, 7-6, which is the current score right now as the Bruins lead. South County looking to salvage this one from Lake Braddock, 1-1. One, one. That's a strike. Another crisp fastball from Wiskowski, 1-2. and two. One, two. Getting, looking for a strikeout inside. Almost hit Whiteside, but two and two now. As White says, it will back out of way of that hard one from Jamie. Jamie, fastball in a low to mid 80s. Here's everyone wondering, he's going to go off speed. And oh, that one was just a tick off. And it's three and two on Whiteside. Looks like it. Went back and got the zone inside, but the umpire's discretion, it was a ball. Payoff from Wiskowski here. Fastball popped up, and it's going to be out of play. Run all the way for it was Wiskowski. That's quite the athleticism there from the mound, of course, with his shortstop abilities. He can do that. So still three and two here on white side, but if that ball were in play and Jamie would make the play, you know, with all that range in that same location where he traveled, it would have been quite something to see from the pitcher position for Wiskowski. Now he's going to step off here. Payoff from Wiskowski. Did not go, so it's ball four on white side. So the Stallions now have a time run on base and go ahead, run at the plate in the form of Deemer. Deemer, who's already hit a free run home run this game. That came in the top of the sixth inning. Cut the lead for Bruins in half, uh, to two runs. This one right here, you could give him the lead, of course. A big power for at 0 1 as he takes the fastball. Everyone's still out getting loud. A 
Here's the 0 1. In the center field, here comes George. Fast coming. He won't get it. It's a base hit for Deemer. Up to second is Whiteside. Now the tying run in scoring position, and we go ahead run at first. And Trevion Campbell up coming on to hit. You know, Campbell does not have the best day. Apple play, you struck out a few times against Bruins pitching. And Campbell could surely redeem himself in a huge way right here. First pitch to Campbell. Off to the right side. Here comes Johnson. Here comes Drum. And no one is going to get it. So it's a foul ball, 0-1. Long way to go for both men, but none could track it down. Hall going to set up the outside part of the plate. Here's the 0 1. Off speed up, 1 and 1. And Jamie's going to look. White side will lead runner for Stallions back to second. One one pitch. Fastball he lands in there, one and two. Let's see what Jamie goes with here. And Campbell's rewarded time by the umpire there. I'll take a breather for a second. See if he goes with that same fastball. The last strike or something else. One, two. It is a fastball, and nowhere close. Two and two. Campbell choking up now on the bat. First and second for the Stallions. One out. Bruins lead seven to six. Stallions looking to at the very least tie it. Two two. Strike three. Hall. No need for a throw down a first. Two way. And the Stallions are down to a final out as Laskowski gets a big one there on Trevian Campbell. And the last hope for the Stallions will be in the form of your designated hitter of Michael DeVore. So Waskowski really trying to bring out that true dog in him right now. Try to get the final out to end this one. What really has become an exciting game here in the later innings. White side off second. And there's a strike, 0 and 1. And Hayden Parton is now the runner at first to pinch run for Deemer. Or actually, courtesy run since he's a current pitcher right now. Here's the 0 1. Nubbed. Shape to first. Got him. Lake Braddock wins. A close one. Got a little dicey. 
Tying run on scoring position with two out. But Lake Braddock comes away with a big one and beats South County 7-6. to six After the Stallions beat them on opening day 3-2. to two. And Lake Braddock will walk away happy with this one as they improve to 7-5. The Stallions drop another one. And the Bruins will be right back at it tomorrow. At West Tomac, we'll see if they play that one, if a few conditions at West Poe are good enough. So as or if it will be postponed again. But as of right now, the Bruins are still going to route one tomorrow to play that. And a great win tonight for the Bruins. Pleasure commenting for you 20 viewers right now and throughout the game. As always, I'm your commentator, Adam Huzera, for the Lake Braddock Student Broadcasting Channel, signing off. And as always, burn to dread, South County Stallions.